Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika, welcome to Floating in Dreams, which is my hobby YouTube channel. And today's video is going to be another new makeup releases video because it is the first Sunday of the month. And that means that I have selected a couple, well, more than a couple of new releases that somehow stood out to me or that I think um, are quite like, are just things I wanna talk to you about with and that we can just chat about some new makeup and tell you a little bit more about Am I going to get these things? Will I be buying these things? Or maybe not? And there are a couple of releases that have my name written all over it. So we'll get to those when we get to those. I'm first going to go back in time to like the start of the month because there were a couple of things that I didn't mention in my August new releases because either they hadn't really been announced just yet or they were announced like the day I filmed that video or something like that. So sometimes there's a bit of overlap with these videos. Um, but there was a palette that actually for a hot minute in like the indie makeup lover realm uh, caused a bit of hype. And that was the Pizza Cat palette by Sugar Drizzle Polish. So this is a nail polish brand that started to do um, uh, eyeshadow palettes as well. And I, I this palette got quite a lot of hype, but this is for me a little bit like, why, why do we want this? Like for me, like the colors inside it seem pretty. It seems to be very sort of shimmery and uh, all that. But I was like, yeah, I don't know. The minute I spotted this, it didn't really like spark my interest. I mean, Pizza Cat, really? Like how old are we? Like that was the first thing I was wondering. So for me, this was a pass. I didn't, uh, I didn't look into that any further. Um, and then BH, of course, is uh, releasing these gemstone-inspired palettes at the start of the month. And last month, I think I, f I posted my new makeup releases like uh, on the first day of the month. So this hadn't really been announced yet. So we got the Peridot, I think that's how you pronounce it in English. And it's got some greens and some warm tones as well. The reason why I'm passing up on pretty much all of these, even though you know some of the color stories do appeal to me, but there's a pressed glitter in almost every single one of these palettes, you guys. And that to me is just not something that I'm interested in. So for me, the pressed glitter is just a no-go. And this has some warm tones and I'm not a huge fan of warm tones. So for me, the only standout shade in this palette is the lime green. And I'm like, I'm not gonna spend 20 euros on an eyeshadow palette just for a lime green. I've got other lime greens in my collection, so I really don't need this. Then I spotted that Estee Lauder is doing a new double wear sheer foundation. So a couple of years ago, I actually bought one of the Estee double wear, I think it was called Water Fresh, and that's a really good foundation, but they did discontinue it. Um, and then I think I bought the, what was it called? Future Generous, something like the Future something. Uh, that comes in like a squeezy tube with a pump. Um, but that seems to be a lot like thicker, a lot creamier, and this seems to be a sheer foundation. So for me, these like skin tint, very natural foundations, that's really what, what, what I like. However, with Estee Lauder, like a lot of these luxury brands, here in the Netherlands, we often cannot get the full shade range. So for me, this is one that I might wanna check out at some point, but it won't be until like early next year because I still have so many other foundations and skin tints that I have purchased in the past couple of months that I still need to try. And I've told myself that unless it's like Essence of Catrice and I wanna try it out for those videos, I'm not gonna buy any more foundations because I have plenty that I still need to try. Kylie Cosmetics has a 24K birthday collection that came out. I'm not sure when this came out. It was like early August, I think. I mean, Kylie Cosmetics is another brand that I'm a really huge fan of. Now that they've rebranded, they have become available in the Netherlands, so it is easier for me to find. It's even, I think there is a stand in store now where I live, so uh, it makes it a lot easier to shop from them, but it's not a brand that I truly, really feel very attached to. So I don't think I've ever tried any makeup that came from like Kylie Jenner or Kim Kardashian, like none of those brands I've actually ever tried because I'm just, I'm just not a fan. Um, and then Too Faced announced a better than sex perfume. I looked at this and I was like, I have to mention this just because, you know, this is like typical Too Faced, very gaudy, kitschy kind of packaging. Um, and then I'm like, this, no. 
And you know, to me, a friend, like a, um, a, a bottle like this and a name like this, I'm thinking this is probably going to be super sweet. And it says here in the notes that it's got a lot of fruit scents uh, and a lot of floral scents as well. So for me, if something has a lot of fruit and flowers in the top couple of notes, I'm usually not a big fan. And of course, Natasha Denona did a couple of drops. I'm first going to mention the first one. The other one I'm going to mention in a bit. Uh, but the Smoke and Vision collection featuring the Xenon eyeshadow palette, which is the smoky gray one. I think that some people might have expected me to pick this up um, because it is a cool tone palette, but it is a smoky gray cool tone palette. And if you are familiar with my content, then I have mentioned in the past that I feel that brands should stop doing cool tones as only grays. If this had had a taupe in there, I would have liked it so much better. So for me, the fact that this is only blacks and like grays, like it's just a gradient really, that's why it's not very appealing to me. And it seems to only come with one shimmer. And I do need more shimmer in this than just the one. Uh, so for me, this wasn't perfect, which is why I passed up on it. Beauty Blender came out with blushes. This seems to be a Bound, the Bounce Liquid Whip Cream Blushes. I'm currently really into blushes as well, but I've sort of hit my saturation point with all of the different bl blushes that I have been purchasing, and I really just need to try a couple of them out. Uh, I'm sort of getting to this point where I'm like, ooh, it's a little bit much because I had all these things I still needed to try, and then all those Essence of Catrice products that I already did a first impression video with. I'll make sure to link both of those in the description box down below in case you're curious. But those kind of dropped a month early for the planning that I had in mind um, because they didn't drop their spring collection until March. So there's now only been like just over maybe four and a half, close to five months between the new releases. So for me, it's like, oh wait, so now I'm in a scramble because now I have all these like SSA like Catrice products that I need to test out. So for me, that was a little unplanned. Uh, and there were other pl other things that I still wanted to try and review for you this month, but now the entire schedule is overhauled because of those new releases. Um, so yeah, no can do with another cream blush. I really don't need it. Um, then there's a new brand that's been announced, Geology Co Cosmetics. I believe Angelica Newquist already did a video on them. Uh, and they have, I think, is it like, yeah, inspired by the desert geology of Australia's Northwest. Um, so that sounds interesting. Um, it's, it's got this like earthy tone kind of eyeshadow palette, which, lo which looks really, really lovely. Um, but this is a brand that where I feel like, yeah, I should just hear more about them first. Um, because with these like foreign indie brands, it can be very difficult for me to get it. And it, I just need to make sure like, is it worth it or not? Then uh, Charlotte Tilbury has released the Super Nudes collection, including a nude Gesm face palette. And that palette looks absolutely stunning, but it looks like something she has done in the past to me. Like, am I the only person? Like for me, this just looks like something she has already done that was limited edition a while ago. And now she kind of brought it back with like slightly different sh shades, which is also how I feel about those like, like, cheek palette, like the full face palettes that she does, those all look alike to me as well. So with Charlotte Tilbury, there's a lot of products that I love and that they do really, really well. Um, but I, I don't really think that all of the, all of the things that the brand does are necessarily interesting for me. And it can be a bit samey if you look into a lot of it. Uh, of course, we need to mention ColourPop in these videos as well, because they're always releasing new stuff. Uh, and they are on a roll with Disney collabs again this month. Um, they came up with this set of Super Shocks with the Disney princesses, for instance. To be quite fair, there's only like one or two shades in this entire set that I would possibly get. And to be honest as well, I have a lot of Super Shocks as ready already and I don't need a lot of these shades. I have found that in Super Shock eyeshadows, I really like their more sheer, more glittery kind of formulas. Those are just my favorites. So it's a bit superfluous for me to then like buy all of these like reds and greens and purples that I know I wouldn't wear in this kind of formula. So gonna pass up on that. NARS has announced a new uh, face palette, face and cheek palette, which looks really pretty. But again, with NARS, like Charlotte Tilbury, I feel they keep doing the same thing. Looks pretty, but I did declutter all of my NARS blushes for a reason. So no can do. 
Like, uh, like the Super Shocks, Colourpop also released a new Y2K collection with some pastels and metallics. This looks pretty, but I got some of those other like Five Pans colorful palettes not too long ago that I still need to try. And these shades just don't really appeal to me because it's a bit, I don't know. They're just not my, they're just not my kind of shade, so no can do. Uh, Morphe and the Cherry Coke collab that looks like a Too Faced palette. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already been uh, moaning about this, but this to me just looks very confusing because it, it looks like something Too Faced would have done like five years ago. Okay, so my camera cut off because my, uh, my battery died, so I had to change the battery, so I do apologize if the angle is different. And I don't know where I was when my camera shut down, so I hope it was at this point, because I was about to mention the new OPV Bloom palette. And this I looked at for a minute, but then I was like, no, this color story is too much all over the place. And the flowers on the background are completely throwing me off. It seems to have some gorgeous teal kind of shades. It does, but it also has a lot of warm tones that aren't necessarily really up my street. So for me, it's like, I like some shades in this palette, but not enough to really commit to buy. Something I did already purchase, the Huda Beauty Wild Obsessions palettes were dropped the day I went to Paris. So I knew if they have these in store, I'm gonna snatch it up. The Tiger, I didn't see anywhere. It seems that that one was released only in certain places. Um, and I had a look at the Python because that did appeal to me, but it's got warm tones Like warm tone neutrals these oranges and I'm like Ugh. So like the Peridot by BH I feel that there should have been more greens in the palette So that's why the only one I decided to buy is the Jaguar So I did pick that one up and if you saw my eyeshadow palette video my eyeshadow palette collection video Then you will have already seen that palette because I did already feature it there then we have a uh, Slime Light Hologram Highlighter by Freck. I don't know, like Freck is I think the one from the Freckle Pen, it's that brand I believe. But if something is called Slime Light, I don't know why, but it just doesn't appeal to me. I think if you're 18 it sounds really cool, but for me, Slime Light, it just, the name in itself just does, I don't want to buy that product, I just don't. Um, Juvia's Place dropped a, um, a brow uh, collection as well. I haven't really been very intrigued with a lot of what Juvia's Place has been putting out this past year. Uh, just those quads that they announced last month that we talked about then. Um, but those I have also decided I don't really need because I have shades like that already in my collection. And here again, I mean, it's pretty. It comes in a bunch of shades. Juvia's Place is really good at that. But it's just like, I... I... I kind of know what I like to do with my brows, so it's not a, an area I really venture into many different realms, you could say. So that's why this one I'm going to pass up on as well. MAC has announced their holiday collection for this year, I think. I think it's, or is it just a fall collection? I don't think it's holiday, but a new limited edition collection called Tempting Fate. And it's got stunning packaging, but the shades in this are Nothing revolutionary. So if you were to buy this, you would just buy it for the packaging, I think. And it seems like in some of the close-ups that I've seen, it looks a bit cheap. So because they're just like printed on. So even though it's very, very intriguing, like it looks really stunning with these like Baroque kind of flowers, this whole like still life kind of vibe. So pretty, so, so pretty, but no can do. I don't want that. And then Colourpop came out with a new collection with Zodiac eyeshadow quads. And the more I looked at these, the more I kind of like them. Um, but I do feel that there's only a few that I'm really drawn to. Um, and I'm not sure which ones. So this is something where I would really have to look into some swatches. I'm not sure if it was the one that came with my Zodiac, but some of these seem to have some sort of duochrome in them. Um, but it's not worth it for me to place an order from Colourpop for just one thing. So uh, I think I'm not going to buy anything from Colourpop until Black Friday. So that I can lump a couple of things together as well and then just have one order and buy everything in one go. That's what I always recommend you do if you're in Europe. If you want to buy Colourpop, you can do so. But in order to make it worth it, you need to buy more than one thing. You just do. Um, then... 
something that's making its way to me. In fact, I need to perhaps again shut down filming this video because it, they could just ring the bell and this palette might arrive and that's the Naked Urban Decay Naked Cyber. I did um and ah about this for a long time because I feel the packaging looks more interesting than the palette itself and it's got very warm toned mattes which I don't like and it's got the peach yet again but it's a naked palette so I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna try it and it seems to have a ton of really nice shimmers so you know how I feel about shimmers as well and I saw Angelica Nukefist already playing uh, around with this on her channel and I was like, yeah, I think I do need that. I kind of held off of it, but we got a bit of an early release here in Europe, so I did order mine from Zalando. Alien Cosmetics has announced a new palette as well, the Hauntingly Glamorous palette. Um, it should launch in September, so a bit of a Halloween release. Alien Cosmetics has some lovely shadows. I've just recently tried the brand for the first time. I actually played with one of their palettes in my most recent Get Ready With Me, in case you're, uh, in case you're curious. So I'll be updating you on how I feel about the brand soon. And at this moment, I think I'm not going to buy from them again, um, because I feel there are some pros and some cons to these shadows. And they are based in the US, so it is a little bit more expensive for me to buy from them. And I think I'd rather like try another indie palette, uh, indie makeup brand, than buy another palette from them at this moment. Then, Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl. We knew this was coming, and yet again, it looks exactly like everything else they've already done. Next. I'm not gonna even mention it. Th this is not gonna happen. It just isn't. Uh, YSL has also announced a holiday collection, and the packaging of this, again, looks really stunning, with this almost like filigree kind of ornamental vibe that's going on in the lipsticks. However, I haven't bought a YSL product in a while. I just recently, the most recent purchase, I think, was a foundation, but their color, like, products I really haven't tried in years. And I remember those lipsticks that have, like, the really nice ornate packaging. Uh, those were actually my least favorite ones at the time. So um, everybody's raving about those Rouge Voulopte lipsticks, but I was like, nah not gonna happen. So I'm not too interested in them. I bought myself a Gucci lipstick from Sephora when I was in Paris and that may be a luxury brand I want to buy some more lipsticks from because that was a good lipstick. I really liked it and it had a sheer formula as well. So I think I'd rather put my money into those than in these YSL limited edition ones. Um, Colourpop has announced the Sonic Bloom collection. I had already forgotten that this had come out. Um, but it looks like every other Colourpop palette, really. I don't know. It's an Ulta exclusive at first, I think, so it may not be on their website yet. And then another Colourpop release that I really had to, like, tell myself, no, you're not buying this yet, if you're already buying it, and that's the Tinkerbell collab. It comes with some Super Shock shadows, Super Shock cheeks, cheeks, those are some lovely cream blushes as well. And then a palette that has those earthy kind of greenish but still neutral kind of vibes that I love. So this palette has my name written all over it. And like I mentioned already, I'm going to hold off of buying anything from Colourpop for the next couple of months. I'd rather place an order through Black Friday. Whether this is still in stock by that time, I don't know. But I do feel I have quite a lot of Colourpop eyeshadow already. And this kind of looks a bit like Mandalorian, Mint to Be, and some brown palettes had a baby. And I already reorganized my Colourpop palettes to kind of make this kind of color story. So do I then really need this? The answer is no. Would I like to try it at some point? Probably yes, but I'm gonna hold off on it because I'm like, no, I, I shouldn't, I really shouldn't. Milk Makeup has come out with a new light coverage concealer. Uh, that comes with a bit of a rollerball. I really wish that Milk would do different packaging. I was this close to purchasing their foundation, but then I spotted it in store at, at Sephora and I just saw how messy that packaging had become over time. And I already, like the Age Rewind Concealer from Maybelline, I really like that, but because it has that sponge applicator that either you use a sponge and it gets dirty really quickly, or you take off the sponge and then it squirts everywhere and it still gets dirty really quickly. Um, so for me, if it's got these like weird packaging things, I'm just not a fan. So that's why I'm going to be passing up on this because I know I couldn't live with that rollerball applicator. 
Um, BH Cosmetics has released a, a, a collab with Iggy Azalea, I think. I think that's her name. Um, totally plastic. I, no, just, no. I, I looked at this and I was like, did we need this? Like, why, why, why does this exist? Okay, this is my third battery <laughs> and I need to speed this up because this is already flashing red at me. So I do apologize if this is going a little bit too quickly. Uh, Kimchi Chic has come out with some pressed pigment duos. Kimchi Chic is a brand I'm currently trying out for you. So I hope to be able to update you on some Kimchi Chic eyeshadows soon. I'm not sure how I feel about them yet. So that's why I'm sort of in limbo when it comes to these because I'm like, mm, not sure if I'd like those. Rare Beauty is launching a mascara. I'm currently trying some Rare Beauty products out, but over here in Europe, we don't get the full line, it seems. I think we only have the, the Vulnerable collection and some complexion products, I believe. So not everything is out here and they didn't launch here until later. So it could be a while until this comes out. And to be quite fair, I swear by really cheap mascara. So I know I won't try this. So we have Ariana's, uh, Ariana Grande's new brand, R.E.M. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I don't think I need another celebrity makeup brand. Do you? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, we haven't seen any products, of course, so let's see what they come out with first and then, uh, then we'll judge, but I'm not super excited about this one or anything. Carnival, what is this even called? Carnival 4. Yes, it's the Carnival 4 from Be Perfect. Um, nice grungy color story, but why is it so big and why is half of it so, so warm toned? If, it, if I could just have the green half of this, I'd be down, but all those other shades, I really don't need. So this is too big for my liking, you know the drill, so passing up on that. And then Colourpop, of course, came out with a really big palette as well. They came out with It's a Mood. And here as well, I, I wish I could just have the nine pans that are in the right, right bottom half of this palette with like the purples and the teals and those grungy greens. That is stunning. The rest of the palette I can really do without. So if Colourpop could just release those nine shades in the bottom right, pretty please, that would be great. That's, that's what I'm looking for. And then the release I wanted to mention is the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. This was kind of already leaked. Some people were already telling me they're going to do the palette, but it's going to be nothing but pinks. And I'm very happy with this. I'm going to buy this when it drops on Cult Beauty. It's got taupes, it's got mauves, and it's got plums. It's my kind of color story. So I'm now also glad I did buy the mini retro because it has those greens that this doesn't even have. It seems to have a couple of warm tones, but it seems to skew quite cool toned as well. So I'm very happy with what this looks like and I will be buying it the minute it launches on Cult Beauty because that's the easiest place for me to buy Natasha Denona from. Um, this is not really like a good like announcement, a true announcement yet. We don't have a color story yet, but Menagerie Cosmetics is coming out with a new violet ink, uh, but it's called Indigo Ink. So not violet, but indigo, which I already told you that should have been the name of the original violet ink. So then I'm really curious to see what this is going to look like, but I think it's going to be like a blue palette, judging by the name, but that's my guess. Sugar Pill is coming out with a new fun size palette. The fun size too, it looks adorable. I'm not entirely sure about this color story just yet. I really like the one I have, but that's Brights and Pastels. And this to me is, it's not quite pastel, it's not quite bright, it's not quite grungy, but it seems to have a little bit of all of that. So I'm not entirely sure yet about this one, whether I really, really like it. Um, but yeah, I would like to see some reviews on this and then I might decide to buy. Fenty Beauty is coming out with a neutral eyeshadow palette that's a little bit bigger. It looks pretty, I have to say. It does look really pretty. Uh, but it seems to snap together with a, um, a face palette. And I did buy two of the snap shadows actually for my full face of Fenty. So I first want to try those. And if those are any good, I might pick this up at some point. But I already have so much eyeshadow that I still need to try. So I'm going to hold off on this one for sure. I, I don't think I really need this one yet. Um, and then uh, Beauty Bay is doing a collab with Disney as well. Um, these palettes look kind of cute actually. 
Um, but with Disney, with Beauty Bay, I have found that their formula can be quite hit and miss. So for me, do I really need this? Again, I really don't. And then like the peridot that I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, BH has announced their Sapphire palette. But sapphires in my brain are blue. Why is this purple? I know sapphires can have other shades. So I'm like, okay. I do really like the juxtaposition of the purple and the green. So I do like that. That silver in there is quite pretty too. But as I already said for the peridot, these shadows are like these palettes are quite expensive for how much shadow you get, I find, because they retail for 20 euros over here. There's one shade I would never use because it's a pressed glitter. So again, there's only four or five shades here that I would buy the palette for, and I'm not sure whether it's worth it. Uh, Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a new palette. The Instant Eye Pally Palette Smoky Eyes Are Forever. It seems to feature some shifty shades from Charlotte. It's a holiday uh, release. This looks pretty, but it's also very warm toned, which I've said a lot in the past about Charlotte Tilbury. It's very warm toned, so it doesn't always go with my complexion. So for me, this is one I'm going to skip up, uh, skip on because it's just, I don't think it's, it's really my vibe. And then we have Makeup Geek, who has sort of teased us with something. Fan favorites that are coming back. I'm wishing these are the highlighters. As predicted, the delivery man also came. So <laughs> I was talking about Makeup Geek and hoping that these were highlighters. That's what I'm hoping they are. I, I really don't know what this is going to be. So this is just something that's teased. So hopefully next month I can tell you a little bit more about it. Then Kaleidos ha is introducing a new lip clay collection, the Apple collection. I think it, is it two parts? I'm not entirely sure, but this is their lipstick formula. And it has this really elaborate uh, release with a really beautiful tin. I would almost buy this for the packaging, but I don't really have an idea yet of the shades that you get in here. Um, but they seem to be uh, eight shades of the Cloud Lip Clay, a lip mask, and some a stone and a fan. That's what it, the a full collection includes. And then uh, Zishi has a new dessert collection. These look really cute. I haven't tried any Zishi yet. And I think I might at some point, I'm not entirely sure. It could be a brand to put on the list for next year. I'm already making a list of brands to try for next year. Uh, like new brands that I would like to buy a couple of products from. So this might be one for the list, what do you think? Then we have a collab between Bobbi Brown of all brands and Monopoly. I saw this and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so this, this is definitely one that really baffled me. Seems to come with a beautiful highlighter. Bobbi Brown can do good highlighters for sure. But again, Bobbi Brown is one of those brands I haven't tried or I have been interested in for years. So this is, this is no, no. Last one, at least the DC and Makeup Revolution collab. I don't buy from Makeup Revolution at all. Uh, they seem to have a collab with like Batman, Joker, and um, what's her face? Catwoman and Harley Quinn, I think. So this is quite, a, quite an elaborate collab, but with Makeup Revolution, I just know that the quality can be so hit and miss. I do like myself a good superhero. So I think they are doing a really smart move here to do a makeup collection with this. But I really think that Makeup Revolution needs to, I don't know, step up their game quality wise. The color stories seem fine. Like they seem fun, uh, like fun palettes for sure. But I really don't need this. Um, I'd rather want that, like I want that new Batman movie to come out, but it's not coming until like what, the springtime. <laughs> so I'd rather watch the movies than I do uh, play, playing with the makeup. So yeah, that's it. Those are all the things I wanted to mention in today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I need to rush because my camera battery is flashing at me yet again. So thank you very much for watching. Please thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to, to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so hope to see you in my next video. And I'm coming back to you on Tuesday with a Shop My Stash. So I hope you would like to stay tuned for that. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.